Hello out there again in YouTube and Radio Land. This is Ham Radio Man Oz. This is episode number 19. <laughs> we are one episode away from the big 20. I really thank you guys for all your support out there and for all the comments and the uh, thumbs up and the likes and the subscribes. So keep watching. Today is an interesting video because what I've got finally, you might remember a couple of episodes back, I cracked the display in my RC2950 uh, by doing the cardinal sin of not being protected, not protecting the LCD with some foam and tape. Well, it took a lot to hunt around and I couldn't get the spare parts, but I did. I'll just put that one aside. But I did manage to pick up a spare RCI2950. And the display and everything works on this. And the case is in very good condition as well. Uh, so I'm going to be able to use a lot of spare parts out of this. Now you might be thinking, well, why don't I just keep this one if it's all working and, you know, put my other one to the side. Because this one isn't working properly. It's faulty. It has uh, intermittent receive and intermittent uh, transmit. And I've tested the receiver. It's all over the place. So it's good for spare parts. It did cost me 130 posted. Uh, but I really am lucky to have been able to pick this up because they're so rare now. And I'm going to um, use all a lot of parts out of this to repair mine. And um, we'll take it from there. It's a shame if this was a really good working radio, then there's no problem I keep it. Now the old LEDs don't work in this one either on the display, but the display works perfectly. And the beauty of it is it's not going to be a hard job, it's just pulling off the old one and putting it into the old radio. So it's going to be a very easy fix. So we're going to be doing that today and hopefully not screwing it up. So the first thing I'm going to do, of course, is strip down the old radio for the, what I need. I'm going to take the covers off. I'm going to take the front panel off, pull out that display, that defective display. That's what I'm going to do first. Okay, so we've taken the covers off. We've taken the front panel off, all the knobs off and everything like that. And uh, this particular front end uh, had a bit of a, um, a scratch on the glass as well. I don't know if you can see that. There's a uh, scratch just there on the glass. That was always there. The other one doesn't have any mark on it, so that whole front piece I'm going to replace from the old radio. Now when you're looking at this radio, this is where I made the mistake before. I didn't put any tape across here or any foam across here when I pulled it out, which I should have done. Uh, since this one's cracked anyway, now I don't need to do it. But on the other radio, before I pull it out, I will certainly put some tape and some foam over there to protect it in case I accidentally drop it again. But to remove this uh, front display is very simple. It's just a couple of screws holding it in there. This is what I like about them. They're so easy to work on. They were designed extremely well. I think there's two more screws down the bottom here. I'll just take those ones out. And then that front piece will basically be able to come straight out. Now I'll just move those screws out of the way. Now there's two long ones and two short ones. And the two longer ones go down the bottom and the two short ones go up to the top. So I'll just move them up out of the way. So now all it is is to simply pull it out. That easy. That's how easy that display comes out. And the little section down the bottom here with the LEDs is just another little board that just plugs in on top and this is where I made the mistake in how I dropped it because I was pulling off this board like that and as I was pushing with my thumbs and this came out this just went flinging away on me crack and it was gone so that's the damaged unit and that's basically now just well I'll keep that because it's got a good chip on there and everything like that one of these days I might get another spare display and just be able to replace that and have that as a spare. So putting that aside, put this whole radio aside, I will now pull off the display and everything from the new radio uh, to get ready to replace and fix into this. And it's amazing how light this is once that display and the cases are off. It's so light. Really well designed radios though, they really do have, they've got even the speaker plugged into a little uh, connection on the corner here and you just unplug that. Uh, but the heat shrink and everything, the, the uh, heat sink, not heat shrink, heat sink 
This one's slightly damaged, but there's no real problem with the heat sink. It works well. So very, very easy. So now I'll pop that aside and do the same to the other radio. Okay, so I've just removed the front cover and everything off the new radio. As you can see, there's no mark on that window there, so that's very nice and clean. I like that. I'm going to put that aside. There's the rubber push button thing for it. And there we have. Now, I haven't unscrewed the display yet because the next step, foam and protect. That's the crucial part. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Put some foam across that and protect it. Well, just when you thought everything was going to be nice and easy, turns out it's not. They're both RCI 2950s, all right, but the display board on the new radio that I picked up is different. Now, I still haven't put the foam on there because I've just very carefully removed the screws and everything, so I've got to put the foam on there yet, but the boards are very different. There's a hole cut out here on this one to accommodate the board that they've got with this display LCD which is uh, different again to this old one my one uh, which doesn't have the space cut out has a separate board for the display to actually plug into and you can see here on this LCD display or L L LCD that there are uh, sections for the uh, soldering connections to the LCD there's four connections on it top and bottom there's two on top and the bottom and the board has a single chip on it the new one however is different again uh, it has only top and bottom on the uh, LCD and has a different type of board with a couple of different chips along here interesting um, so where do we go from here well now the choice is what do I do do I remove the circuit boards and just swap the circuit boards over uh, do I unplug all these little plugs from here and see if I can match them up over here and pull this board off there's every chance that looking at the colors looking at the way that it's all plugged in looking at the ribbon cables and the connections on here going to here they're all color coded the same and there looks to be the same exact number of cables. So, it's a bit of a dilemma and I'm not sure which way I should go. Do I just unplug all the plugs here and swap these boards over? <clears throat> Do I just replace the face plates themselves and see if I can get the display to work that way? this may be a newer model than my old one even the board is uh, slightly lighter in color let's see if I can actually find a uh, model number they for all intensive purposes they all look exactly the same I can't see any real differences there at all I can't even see if there's any damaged components on the board to tell me what might be wrong with it but it does look a lot newer the circuit board does look a lot newer than mine the electrolytic capacitors all look in better condition as well so an interesting dilemma has developed and I'm just not sure which way to go now but <clears throat> I will figure this out. So I'll come back with uh, what I've done shortly. Well, after a bit of a chore to try and get some of this done, what I ended up doing was removing the chassis front section and all the plugs off the board uh, from the old radio, which is the one below us now anyway. Uh, now when you do something like this when you got a lot of little plugs like this and lots of different wires and that it's very very important you take photographs entirely of every single plugs location wiring direction colors that sort of thing make notes on paper 
uh, if you haven't got access to a, a service manual or a schematic diagram of the radio um, just take photos good color photos make sure you cover every plug every part of that board so that if you need to you can reference that uh, for when you have to remove them to plug in the old one plug in the new one um, so I did that removed that one and the good thing about it was that at least all the plugs were the same around the board so I was able to put all the plugs back in put the front section back on from the new radio back on and of course just got a cable tie these are the lens up here and then I did a test and of course everything's working fine the only problem I've just had and it really is kind of annoying uh, when trying to re replace the lights in the display because those lights still weren't working those little 12 volt globes and trying to put LEDs into that display uh, I put a quarter watt resistor on the positive lead of each of those uh, uh, LEDs which did work at first and then for some reason they weren't working I put the multimeter across uh, to do a voltage test on the positive and negative side of where the LED was and um, something went puff there was a little tiny puff of smoke and uh, my display quickly went off so I quickly disconnected all the power unplugged the uh, the uh, LEDs removed the LEDs tested the display was working again that's fine the radio was working um, but there's no voltage now output onto the positive and negative uh, where the actual lights were. There's no power output there. Um, so I'm assuming that um, somehow the little diodes, and they're very, very small SMD diodes on there, uh, have went puff, uh, preventing the power going out. But look, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, I think later, at a later stage, I will tap. Uh, the LEDs uh, to another power source on the board via the on off switch so that I can when I turn it on the LEDs will come on um, I'll have to figure out something maybe I'll have to put a little circuit in come off the 12 volt straight away put a little circuit in there even so I, I'm not really fussed about that at this particular time I did want to get the LED displays going on it um, so that the display was nicely lit up but things keep seem to be keep going wrong with this radio a little bit here and there uh, look so doesn't matter the radio is back together display is working the radio is working I just got to piece it all back together now and um, everything's good the, the, the good thing is as I say even though the displays were different the front ends were different all the plugs all the wiring and everything was exactly the same on the boards so i'll just put it back together give it an on-air test and I'll leave it at that for now um, worry about led to the uh, display at a later stage okay well uh, as you can see the radio is now back together and the display is working and it's transmitting as well all the modes are working quite nicely there's volume there's everything there that i need and the display is working so the only the only thing that's not working not happening is the lights in the display and uh, it turns out what what it was uh, that shorted out the little things on me and i'm lucky that that's all it was was there was a tiny bit of solder that I didn't notice when I was trying to solder the LEDs that had broken away and touched uh, two connections and it's all it takes is the tiniest thing that you, you're just not observant of I thought that the, the board was clean I even wiped over the the board after I did my little solder and I checked my solder connections to make sure that there was no shorts um, and it turns out that uh, there must have been just a tiniest little bit of solder that just rolled and arced and that's a shame but everything's working the radio is working the only thing it did was just short out the power that supplies the lights power these lights are working of course uh, there's no problem with those lights they're all working and at night time they'll probably be easier to see 
but I've just got to try and get two LEDs in there some stage, uh, find an alternate power source on the board somewhere and get some light into there. Now that will probably be a lot easier to draw it from another source like a 3.3 volt source or a 5 volt source somewhere on the board. Um, so that's what I'll do in the end. In the meantime, it's nice to have a display working again on the radio, even though it's not lit up. Everything is working nicely and I can read the dials and everything again. So that's, that's what's important. And uh, there's our manual, so I can see there. Channel 9, there's the CB. Channel's all just normal. Um, so everything's working. It's all changing channels and changing frequencies quite nicely. So there we go. So I guess uh, if I was to add anything about this experience uh, at all to this video uh, is that no matter how good you think you are at repairing radios or working on radios or uh, you know modifying radios at all it only takes the smallest thing to completely ruin your whole day uh, and when it started out with the the cracked display that really annoyed me cracking that because technically it shouldn't have happened but you can't cry over what's happened. It happened, move on. I was lucky to find another radio out there by advertising through various sources to find another radio. Um, didn't find the displays. The displays are just too rare and hard to get. But I was lucky to find another radio, lucky to be able to make it work, even though again another problem the smallest piece of solder which i just didn't notice caused an arc but thankfully thankfully did not upset anything else uh, it just probably blew the little tiny diodes that supply voltage output to those things but the rest of it is working 100 percent i've tested it on air i've tested uh, all the modes and everything like that so there's no problem with that so just remember, you don't have to be, uh, whether you're an expert, whether you think you know everything, there's always going to be one tiny little detail that one day is going to get you just like it did me. And admittedly, the first thing was my fault because I didn't take steps to put foam over this and tape to protect it while I was pulling it out. But shorting out... A connection is a very simple thing to overlook. A tiny bit of solder can be overlooked very quickly and easily, and that's the way it goes. Um, but we can count for small blessings anyway. Okay, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please give me a thumbs up, comment, rate, subscribe. Tell everyone about this channel. Let's keep it going. Let's get uh, as many likes as we can out there. And I really hope you enjoy my videos and uh, I hope you enjoy the future episodes to come. In the meantime, this is Ham Radio Man Oz. This has been episode 19. A semi-repaired job. <laughs> but it works. That's the main thing. And uh, I'll leave that radio alone for a while. I just won't touch it. <laughs> Alright. Cheers, guys. 73s.